mga ka-learners, let's continue our exploration of Mindanao, its people and its history. Today, we will explore Mindanao's long journey towards peace. You learned in Lesson 1 the brief history of the people in Mindanao and their struggle. You also learned that despite the richness of Mindanao, it has been suffering from the harsh realities of war and poverty. This lesson will discuss peace processes undertaken by our government to put an end to the escalating conflict in Mindanao. Peace processes under the Marcos, Aquino, and Ramos administrations will be discussed. Among the peace accords or agreements that this lesson will focus on are the Tripoli Agreement on December 23, 1976, and the final peace accord signed by former President Ramos and former Muslim opposition leader and governor of the autonomous region of Muslim Mindanao, Nur Miswari, on September 2, 1996. In this lesson, we will identify the efforts of the government in bringing peace to Mindanao and explain the different peace initiatives undertaken by the different administrations of the Philippines. Are you familiar with the people involved in resolving the conflict in Mindanao? These people are former presidents Ferdinand Marcos, Cory Aquino, Fidel V. Ramos, and revolutionary Nur Miswari. During martial law, a war erupted in Mindanao in 1972, and it is estimated that 120,000 lives were lost, countless more wounded, and billions of pesos were lost in the damage of property. At the height of the conflict, it was reported that about 80% of the entire military strength of the country were in Mindanao. The late President Marcos claimed that about 11,000 soldiers were killed during the first eight years of the war in Mindanao. To counter the secessionist movement in Mindanao, the Marcos administration increased its military spending to twice that spent on health and education. Due to the conflict, many fertile lands were left unproductive and communities abandoned in Mindanao. Investors became scared. Properties were destroyed and communities deprived of basic social services. It is important that we learn a significant term I mentioned, and that is the word secessionist. The word secessionist is synonymous to the word separatist. A secessionist movement refers to a group or an organization that aims to separate, as in the case of the Muslims, from the Philippines. They want to have their own independent nation, thus the term Bangsamoro, Moro Nation. Mindanao under martial law. The cost of the conflict was so huge, not only in terms of financial expenses, but also in terms of the number of those injured and killed. In 1975, with both sides suffering heavy losses, the government and the MNLF searched for a sensible and peaceful way to resolve the conflict. This was partly influenced by the international Islamic community, particularly the Organization of Islamic Conference, OIC. The OIC, whose primary goal or philosophy is the Quranic concept of Ummah, or one community of all Muslims in the world, tried to pressure both the government and the MNLF to undergo peace negotiations. The Marcos government, which was hesitant at the moment, agreed to negotiate with the MNLF only after oil-producing Muslim countries threatened the government with an oil embargo or blockade. Thinking that this would worsen the nation's already weakening economy, Marcos called for a ceasefire and opened the door for negotiations. Former President Ferdinand Marcos and MNLF leader Nur Miswari signed the first peace agreement between the government and the MNLF on December 23, 1976, under the mediation of the OIC. The agreement was known as the Tripoli Agreement because the agreement was signed in Tripoli, Libya. The move to settle the conflict in Mindanao peacefully had somehow paid off. The MNLF dropped its demands for independence and settled for political autonomy. That is, 
Mindanao will remain part of the country but has an independent government. Tripoli Agreement Under the Tripoli Agreement, Palawan, 13 of the 22 provinces of Mindanao and the nine cities located in these areas would be granted political autonomy from the central government in Manila. The autonomous regional government would have its own executive, legislative, and judicial branches and a regional security force independent of the AFP. The areas that would be granted autonomy listed in the agreement were Basilan, Tawi-Tawi, Zamboanga del Sur, Zamboanga del Norte, North Cotabato, Maguindanao, Sultan Kudarat, Lanao del Norte, Lanao del Sur, Davao del Sur, South Cotabato, Sarangani, Sulu, Palawan, and all the cities and villages situated in the above-mentioned areas. The signing of the agreement, however, was not something that happened smoothly, as it then appeared to be. Paragraph 15 of the Tripoli Agreement called for the establishment of a provisional government in the areas covered by the Autonomy Pact. A provisional government is a temporary government. The planned provisional government in Mindanao was aimed to oversee a smooth transition of governance from the central government to an autonomous one. For the agreement to push through, former President Marcos, through one of the government's negotiating panels, proposed the addition of another provision. The provision was later known as paragraph 16 of the agreement. The paragraph stipulates that the Philippine government shall undertake all the necessary constitutional processes to implement the entire agreement. It was because of that single provision that until today, the Tripoli Agreement remains unimplemented. It was this provision that Marcos and the President after him based the implementation of the Tripoli Agreement according to their own interpretations. The MNLF thought that the autonomy of the 13 provinces was already a settled issue. The government, however, insisted on subjecting it to a plebiscite or a direct vote of the people who were living in those areas. The MNLF boycotted the plebiscite that Marcos called for. Six months after the signing of the agreement, hostilities in Mindanao again erupted due to the lack of implementation of the Tripoli Agreement. Mindanao after the people power. The people power on February 22 to 25, 1986, ended the 14 years of Marcos's administration by peacefully overthrowing him. He was replaced by Corazon Aquino, the widow of Senator Benigno Aquino Jr., one of Marcos's opponents. The February 1986 People Power Revolution provided a chance for the reopening of talks with the Muslims. After being sworn into office, Aquino initiated several peace talks with the various rebel groups in the country, including the MNLF. Not surprisingly, Nur Miswari was not threatened by Aquino's presidency, since the late Senator Aquino was sympathetic to the plight of the Filipino Muslims. Aquino, on the other hand, declared that she was willing to have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with Muswari just to bring peace in the country. The meeting, however, did not push through because bringing peace to Mindanao was such a tedious process and Aquino did not have enough time to focus on it. She was busy rebuilding the nation and blocking the military rebels' attempts to overthrow her. The first Aquino administration revised the constitution which drew up provisions for the establishment of autonomous regional governments for Muslim Mindanao in the south and the Cordilleras in the north. The Congress passed the Organic Act for the Autonomous Region of Muslim Mindanao, ARMM, on November 19, 1989. The legislation was subjected to a plebiscite wherein only four provinces, Lanao del Sur, Maguindanao, Sulu and Tawi-Tawi voted for inclusion in this new autonomous structure. The MNLF rejected the legislation. 
It claimed that not only had it been excluded from the process of drawing up the autonomy law, but the plebiscite had reduced its territorial coverage from 13 provinces to 4-2. The MNLF maintained their position and insisted that the government should implement the Tripoli Agreement of 1976. The passing of the Organic Act for the ARMM was recognized as the blueprint of the Aquino administration in attaining sustainable or lasting peace for Mindanao.